In the late 1980s, spread axle reefers began appearing on our interstates and they caught on like wildfire. In this video, I'll tell you why the old pros prefer the spread axle trailers. This video is brought to you by GP Transco. GP Transco continues to be the gold standard for top carriers out there. New drivers can make between eighty dollars and $90,000 in their first year with GP Transco. They've got a great benefit package. They've got a 401k with a 5% match and they're honest and transparent. They're a great place to work for. Check them out at gptransco.com. I bought my first spread axle reefer in 1995 and I loved it immediately. Yes, they had a few disadvantages, but the advantages far outweighed the disadvantages. One disadvantage was you couldn't spin them in a tight space. And a second disadvantage was you couldn't really corner a hard corner with them. The tires would roll under the rims and if you weren't careful, you would chew up the tires and eat through a set of tires. But the advantages were that you could load them and scale them really easily. There was no scaling them, checking, sliding the axles, going back to the scale, back and forth, back and forth between sliding and scaling and sliding and scaling. You just had to tell the shipper to load the weight at the back of the trailer, single one or two at the front, and the whole thing would just scale properly every time. On a spread axle reefer, once the axles are more than 10 feet apart, if they're 10 foot one or more apart, those axles are considered single axles. So you're allowed to put 20,000 pounds per axle on a spread as compared to 34,000 pounds on a tight tandem. And something else I really liked about them was they rode a whole lot better than a tight tandem. So we all bought spread axle reefers and we found that we could equip them with different options like electric dump valves that we were controlling from the cab to dump the front or the back axle to help us go around a corner or something like that, take some of the pressure off. Some of the drivers plumbed the exhaust air lines up back into the floor of the trailer so the scales couldn't hear the air dumping out of the axles and they would adjust their axles as they crossed the axle scales that the DOT had set up at the time. This is before the plate scales even came to be. And you could, you could move your weight around by dumping the various axles. Some of the drivers were able to equip their, um, their reefer trailers or spreads with a, a lift axle. So they could lift an axle when they were running empty or running light. And some of the drivers, myself included, equipped our spread axle trailers with sliding axles so we could close them up into a tight tandem if we wanted to or spread them out depending on the situation. And I had to run Canada where you had to be an eight foot spread. So it was an advantage to me to be able to close that spread up to eight feet when I got into Canada. My last spread axle, for instance, was a 53 foot reefer with a 12 foot spread and you could scale almost anything with that trailer. It was great. There were air equalization valves underneath the trailer, of course, and it would equalize the air pressure between the two axles, no matter how far apart they were. Now these spread axle reefers became so popular that some shops, including some dealership shops, started taking a tight tandem 34, slicing it in half and spreading the axles to build these spread axle trailers. The problem with those trailers was that they should have had extra crossers closer together on the floor of the trailer to offset all the twisting that the spread would do to the deck. I knew one guy that tried to carve around a tight corner with one of those custom custom made spread axle trailers that wasn't built properly. He ended up twisting all the crossers. They broke through the roof of the trailer, hit the cargo, pulled the airlines off, and he ground to a halt right in the middle of the tight corner, right in town. So it's like anything else, you know. You've got to build it right or not at all. That's why I always bought the Great Dane trailers. They were always built sturdy and tough. I never had a problem with them. Story time. I knew one guy that rigged his trailer up and he had a dump switch on the tandems on his drive axles and he had a dump switch, an electric dump switch, on both trailer axles. Now he did a lot of Northwest stuff out at Washington and Oregon, did a lot of apples. And apples back then paid box rate. Didn't really pay particularly well unless you loaded really, really heavy. That was only really the best way to make any money pulling apples back then. 
So this guy would just load the trailer just to the brim with apples and then use these trick dump axles to go across the plate scales that existed right across Montana and through into Minnesota. And after Minnesota, he could beat all the rest of the scales all the way home. But he came out of Washington State one night, got into Montana early in the morning. He was tired and he was crossing the plate scales in Montana and got his dump axle valve switches mixed up. So he was loading the, the axle when he should have been dumping and he made about three mistakes and the scale pulled him around back and said, you're way overweight. What's going on? He goes, he goes, yeah, yeah, I thought I would probably was. I, I'll, I'll go to the truck stop. There's another truck that, that we have coming a few hundred miles behind us. I'll hook up with him. I'll offload some of my load into his trailer. I'll get it all legal and we'll be good. And the scale guys back then were really good. They said, yep, okay. So there was a truck stop right there at the same exit as the scale and, and Rick wheeled off into the truck stop. There was no other truck coming. He just caught up on his sleep. He slept for about six or eight hours, caught up on his sleep, crossed the scale again, did the dump valve switches correctly this time, got the green light, <laughs> and off he went. And there were all sorts of tricks like that you could do with these spreads and these dump axle switches. And it's something they've caught on to now and you can't really get away with that anymore. So there is a good story for back in the day. Take care, keep the rubber side down, don't be playing with the dump axle switches when you're crossing the plate these days, you won't get away with it. I'll see you on the back office.